Hello, you're tuned in to the Royal Kingdom Estates platform. This right here is The Lawyer's Corner. We introduced this particular show recently and most of you love this so much because we get to talk about everything legal in Ghana. And as usual, I have lawyer Kwabna Fiel with me right here. We're going to be talking about a very essential topic when it comes to real estate in Ghana. Hello, lawyer Fiel. Oh, hello, Ajua. How are you today? I'm doing great and terrific. Okay, that's amazing. Thank yeah. you so much for having the time to have this conversation with me. And me personally, I'm very, very excited about this because as a fully functioning real estate brand, we've been getting a lot of questions, especially in this area that we're about to discuss. So guys, today we're gonna to be talking about land registration and documentation in Ghana. So first and foremost, for our audience, can you please give us an overview of land registration in Ghana? Okay, so um, Adria, shall I say a good afternoon to your viewers? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so the thing about land is that because land is an immovable property, that there are a lot of complexities around it. Yeah. It is it is immovable because you cannot, as the word suggests, mm -hmm. you cannot take it along when you purchase. Right. So it is always situated at a pe at, at a place. Yeah. So it's important that when you are buying you conduct a lot of due diligence before buying. Okay. So when it comes to land registration, when you, are you have come to a conclusion that after all the due diligence, conducting search and everything, and you feel that the land is um, actually safe to acquire, yeah. the first thing you do, which I always advise, is request to attend to the site or go visit the site with your own personal surveyor. Okay. Because one of the ways of doing a good due diligence mm -hmm. is to ensure that you take your surveyor to the site and you pick the coordinates. Okay. Then he will then prepare a site plan in your name. Mm -hmm. Then you use it to conduct the search. The reason why normally I do not advise people to take site plans from the vendors is that mm -hmm. you are not a technical person when you are buying land. Right. Okay. So they could give you a site plan and take you to a, a particular site where you are standing, but the site plan will not be speaking to where you are standing. Exactly. So it is important that your surveyor will take you to where the land is, then you pick the coordinates, then mm -hmm. you conduct the search. Okay. When the search comes out and it is favorable, favorable means that the person who is seeking to sell the, or convey the land to you mm -hmm. is the owner. Right, they are and, legit. Yeah. Okay. At that point, then an indenture is prepared which is the okay. instrument mm -hmm. when the indenture is prepared it is important that you let your lawyer see it or a person who is vexed in land matters see it because the root of titles and all those spell out clearly mm -hmm. how the land has the phases through which the land has gone through yeah. and who is the owner the search will reveal all of the these. search will reveal the owner okay but it will not give you details outline of who uh, the history of the land okay some of the searches will give you up to a point Oh, it will show so it's that date limited. Yeah, so it will say that this person acquired it, this person acquired it, this person mm -hmm. acquired it, and all those things. But the root of title, which after the recitals in the indenture, mm -hmm. will show the history, a thorough history of the land. How a do you one. get the root of title? The root of title simply talks about the ownership, the various faces mm -hmm. or interests that has been held on the land. So, for yeah. instance, if you are buying for the Bawe Kwate family, for instance. Mm -hmm. They will tell you that in 1960, th this particular period, uh, this land was declared by the Supreme Court in 1961 that they are the owners of yeah. the land. Mm -hmm. So this person has acquired, this person has also acquired. Yeah. And so there are various ownership rights that has uh, accrued over the period. Then somebody then who is a secondary owner is selling to you. Okay. So when you get the indenture, that indenture must be shown to a lawyer. If he approves of it, mm -hmm. that the writing has been done and the... Uh, the content of indenture is consistent with the search you conducted. Yeah. Then you take the indenture to... That indenture would have been signed mm -hmm. by the person who is selling the land to you yeah. with his witness. Okay. Then you also have to sign with your witness. There is a back of the indenture which has the oath of proof and other uh, yeah. uh, information that you would have to take to the land registry mm -hmm. at the high court. Okay. Then the registrar would then fill the others 
and commission the document. Okay. A, a, a moment. Slow and down so that our audience that have no knowledge about um, land registration at mm. all are able to follow up to this yeah. point. And indenture, mm. just like you're mentioning, is uh, if I'm going to be putting it rightly, a document that proves that you've actually purchased a piece of property. Yes, you Am have I acquired it right. Yes, you have acquired the land. Yeah. The indenture. It's a transaction. It's a contract, a form of con contract. It's a transaction between two parties, mm -hmm. one being the owner and the other person being the person who is acquiring the land, right. the interest in the land. Okay. So when you take you to the registrar of lands at the hi high court, when mm -hmm. it is stamped, at the back of the site plans that are contained in this, this day you have barcode. Yeah. First, the land, when you, you are done, then you take it to the lands commission. There, is a, there are appropriate forms that you would have to fail. Mm -hmm. When you do so, then you start a registration. But may I say that there's a distinction between deed registration no, and land title sure. registration mm -hmm. because where the land is determines the type of registration that is there. Okay. Presently, as we have it by law, Tema, Greater Kumasi, and mm -hmm. Accra are the only registrable districts in Ghana. Right. So if your land falls outside Greater Kumasi and Accra, then what you have to do is deed registration. Deed registration. So there's a distinction between deed registration and title, and title registration. If I, you want me to uh, uh, yeah, talk a little let's, about... Let's touch on it a little bit. So for instance, when, when, when you're doing a deed registration, what you do is that you take the indenture which has been given to you by the the vendor, mm -hmm. the your grantor. Yeah. You have taken at that point, you have taken it to the high court for it to be stamped and all those things. Now you go to, for instance, let's use Koforidua as the area where the land is located. Mm -hmm. So you go to Koforidua, you go there, you present your your instrument, which is the indenture. Yeah. You go to the lawyers there will examine it. Mm -hmm. The technical officers will take you through all the processes to see whether the cadastral plan and all those things are right. The what? Cadastral plan. It's a okay. plan that is used, the site plan that is in there. Right. So when you go through those processes, mm -hmm. then when they come to the conclusion after vetting the documents and they come to the determination that indeed the person who sold the land to you is the rightful owner mm -hmm. and has the right to alienate the land to you, then you make the appropriate payments. And when you go through all those processes, the land is plotted. Okay. in your name mm -hmm. when the land is plotted in your name you are given a peculiar land registration number mm -hmm. normally they will give you a copy of the indenture and that indenture will have various stamps of the amounts and fees you have paid stamp duty and everything you have paid okay and the the land registration number in the deed registration is normally at the back of the indenture and also in front of the indenture and it's always normally in red color it okay. is stamped it you see that it is written lvd plus slash some number okay. that indicates so it will show you the land registration number okay so with that your name is plotted into the system then any subsequent search conducted at that land's registry will yield your name as being the current owner right. present owner yeah so that's for the deed registration but when it comes to land title registration mm -hmm. It is a little bit complex. Okay. It's a little bit complex because the processes are a little bit, bit elaborate. Mm -hmm. You go to you go through the same process of getting your your indenture from your owner, going to land um, land registry of the yeah. courts, getting it stamped. Then you take it to the land title registry. Mm -hmm. Then you commence the process. You stamp first. You stamp the document. Then you fill the appropriate forms. When you fill the appropriate forms, now. Upon the payment of all the statutory fees, mm -hmm. there will be visitation okay. on the land, which is site inspection. Mm -hmm. When it, the land is inspected, which, which people conduct the land commissions it? and okay. their surveyors okay. will take, I mean, you accompany them to the land, they will go and survey the land again mm -hmm. to ensure that what you have presented to them the, is indeed what is being registered. It's because, accurate, you see, right. for instance, during the registration process, they would want to know whether there is a property on it. That will affect the valuation of okay. the land. Okay. Secondly, when land is being registered in your name, the assumption is that you have possession. Right. So an inspection process would, would lead to a situation where there's, if there's conflict, 
and you are trying to register the land while somebody else has a has possession mm -hmm. it will bring about the conflict yeah. process for it to be resolved first so for instance somebody could be in possession of the land mm -hmm. whilst you are registering the land yeah they would want to know who is that person on the land yeah is the person related to you mm -hmm. are you the person is your license yeah. and all those things it is upon the visitation that they will get to know that maybe the person is claiming ownership yeah, and you're already registering. Meanwhile, you're also registering it. So if there is no problem with that and you go to the land, they will prepare the necessary uh, documentations. documentations and there is a till at the till and there's a publication. Okay. For twenty one days. Publication for twenty one days has to do with reasonable notice to the entire world that Adjo, for instance, mm -hmm. has presented her instruments to us for registration. We are telling the world, if you have anything to say about it, come, come forth. forth now. <laughs> so if you don't show up yeah. and the land is registered uh, in the name of Adjoa, you have nothing to say again. Right. Title will be issued. Okay. So after 21 days, they'll start the processes of printing the title mm -hmm. certificate for yeah. you. So basically, that's a, a snapshot of uh, and an overview of how registrations are done. Okay. In, but okay. let me add okay. that. Okay. 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 Is there a particular reason why um, certain parts of Ghana are entitled to the titleship and then some other parts do the deed registration? Why couldn't it be deed for the entire country or that's, titleship for the entire that's country? That's a good question, Adjoa. Because you see, the thing is that land registration has got to do with conflict. Okay. The essence of the registration process is to prevent multiple sales of land mm -hmm. and to create identities for land. Okay. You will notice that at the point in 1986 when the Light Title, Title Act, Land Title Act was passed, mm -hmm. it was conflict was about land was limited to the capitals, most right. often the regional capitals and all those. Okay. So the law that established that uh, that particular process mm -hmm. says that land title registration is limited to greater Accra and greater part of Kumasi, Edum area and all those. So oh, if you go okay. to Kumasi, outside of Kumasi, you may not have land title registration. Right. So for instance, somebody who is living at, at Promasi, you ask for a, a GSO at Promasi, lands there are deed registration, not mm -hmm. title okay. registration. Oh. So with time, eventually, mm -hmm. because our society is becoming complex, yeah. land is, is becoming a hot commodity across the Everywhere, country so yeah. with time i'm sure the law, laws will be amended for uh, title registration should be required for all okay. lands across the country okay i see that would be amazing now um looking at the current land act that we have mm. we recently got to um know that uh we don't do freehold anymore we now mm. do leasehold and the possession differs between citizens and then foreigners mm. now one major question that i mostly get all the time is that does land registration differ between citizens and foreigners? Is the uh, process the same or are there some differences in there? Okay, so I'll say that the process of registration are the same. Okay. But the tenure mm. of, or the period of grant made to you will differ from citizen uh, to non-citizen. Okay. A non-citizen is not... A, it's not expected to be given a grant that is more than 50 years. Right. So if you look at the 1992 constitution, it says in retrospective, retrospectively, land granted to people in 1967 onwards, foreigners are not supposed to get more than 50 years. Yeah. There are policy rationales. Even that, even if you're a Ghanaian citizen, if you basically, land transactions are contract-based. Mm -hmm. In countenance where we are now, I don't think that you can get, even if you're a Ghanaian, you can get a grant mm -hmm. that will transcend 50 years. Wow. Most of it, you can get 30 years, 40 years. Yeah. Just because it's quite expensive. Yes. There are areas you can get 70 years, some mm -hmm. 75 years, yeah. some 99 years. Mm -hmm. But basically, it's difficult now even to get 99 years. Wow. The reason is simple. You see, land, the concept of land in our uh, African jurisprudential thought is that the land is for the dead, the living, and yet unborn. Okay. So you don't want to enslave the future right. of people. Uh -huh. So if you are giving so many years of land to people, 99 years, and reversionary interest lies with the same family, when will their, the their next generation, generation, yeah. next generation come to inherit the same land? Uh -huh. So that's what the, the limit is. Uh -huh. 
Yes. Then, so if you're a foreigner, you're not more entitled to more than 50 years of grant. I see. Okay. Now, looking at, we have uh, two main, not two main, but let's take the two types of land. Uh, let's look at customary and then the statutory land. Um, when it comes to registering these lands, are there any differences? Or is it a fact that land is land, so all registration processes are the same? You see, two lands, two lands are lands granted. Two lands are lands that belong to the stool, as the name suggests. Yeah. And they are family lands. So it is not every land that goes through uh, the same process. Okay. In terms of grants. Mm -hmm. When there's two grants you land and you are registering, if you're not a subject, so for instance, if you're not a subject of the stool, okay. you cannot get a freehold. If you look at the concept of freehold under the new lands act, it appears that the Lands Act is I mean, is doing away with the concept of freehold right. entirely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, if the land is owned personally, mm -hmm. then the nature of the grant is also different. There are people who have who have acquired lands that they have alienated, even under the current Lands Act, and they have tended to give it as freehold. Okay. When the law forbids that, mm -hmm. so. When you talk about uh, freeholds and leaseholds, the distinction is that when under the stu uh, under uh, two lands, mm -hmm. lands that are granted by the stool, the tenure may be different, the conditions may be different. Okay. In the same way, when you are talking about vested lands or lands that are owned by the states, mm -hmm. when you are getting land from the states, the nature and the tenure are different. It's different. Yeah. That is very interesting. Okay, now quickly, we're about to wrap up, guys. But before we go, what are, first of all, what's the duration for land registration? It's an interesting question because let me say that there are primary registrations mm -hmm. and there are secondary registrations. When I say primary registration, it means that the land has never been registered before. Okay. So when you are starting, first registration which is the primary registration it takes a longer an awful long period yeah. they may tell you seven months six months but you can be sure you can go beyond one year wow in fact an assignment which is based on transfer an assignment simply means that there's title on the land and the land is owned by somebody who has registered the last way as title okay. so the person may transfer an interest in a portion of it or the entire land to you so they will tell you it takes within one month to three months, but you can be sure that practically, based on what we do for clients, yeah. it can be more than six months or seven months where you have not had it. Because you see, our, we have an, a system that is not too efficient. Hmm. You have an inefficient system. Yeah. So you may take processes from your client and see, uh, attempt to register, and you will remain there forever. It's quite That's interesting. Yes, it's quite disappointing because <laughs> The land administration project was supposed to have dealt with all these things, but I think we are, even though we are making progress, I think that it's quite a in slow terms progress. of the the progress we are making is quite yeah. um, it's, incremental it's, in nature. Yeah. But I think that we ought to speed up the process. We do because yeah. personally, before I even um, came into real estate, I used to think like this process is very efficient, very fast, because I know everybody in Ghana knows that there are structures that have been put in place to take care of these issues. Then I got in and I realized, oh, sometimes it takes forever. Some people have been striving to get their lands registered and the system is just... And I think, it, I think you're right. I think it's also part of the reason why we are having a lot of conflict in land administration in Ghana, yeah. because you see, you people may not be patient enough to wait for long searches mm -hmm. you may have paid officially for a search on the land because yeah. it's one of the prudent ways of uh, carrying out due diligence to acquire land but you remain there i mean you uh, process you apply for a search to be conducted and for over one month you have not had a search yeah that's for sure you were the person who is uh, selling the land or the land who a person who is seeking to convey the land to you is saying look it is because I need money agent, and that's why I'm mm -hmm. selling this land. So they are taking so you, the money from you. Meanwhile, taking, uh, your search is not done. Yeah, your search is not done. The search is to give you comfort that the person who is seeking to convey the land to you is the actual owner. Yeah. Many people are falling into the same uh, traps of this nature because of the inefficiency of the land commission. Because right. 
once the person says that look i cannot wait any longer mm -hmm. because you say you are conducting a search i cannot wait any longer so if you not pay me then i would have to sell to another person then the person being desirous of acquiring the land yeah. decides to part with money only for the search to come to see that there is conflict and then hell breaks the loose. person who is seeking to convey to you is not the owner of the land then there's problem wow. but if the process is efficient yeah. and within three days you can pay for a search and the search will tell you yeah. that this is the actual owner and you go and transact business with the person then you know that exactly. all these conflicts will be avoided it will make life very very much easier precisely now finally before you go you are a lawyer you've dealt mm. with many of these issues before what um, practical advice will you give to somebody that wants to register land for the mm. first time okay so first before the registration i'll talk about acquisition because mm -hmm. you can only register a land that you have acquired the biggest advice and the foremost i'll give is in the process of trying to acquire land don't rush right. i've always told my clients the land you are seeing today for which you are you are agitated you want to buy at all costs yeah. immediately that land has been lying there. People have come to that land exactly. several times. Mm -hmm. You don't know the reason why it is so there. They didn't get it. So the fact that the land is in a prime area and it's not been sold and you are now going to buy it, either one, either you are lucky because you are the first person who has been, the offer has been made to, yeah. or there are reasons why people are not buying the land. Sure. So the most important thing is to ensure that you carry out your due diligence. Okay. Like I've indicated, mm -hmm. conduct your search, bring your personal uh, so surveyor yeah. to come and pick the coordinates, conduct a search, and there are informal way of informal ways of doing so. In fact, it interests you to note that the plantain seller mm -hmm. or the loto writer or the Tazi rank, uh, the bookma, the Tazi rank who is around the land or anything of that sort can tell you a lot about, about the, land, the land in particular. Yes, right. they can't say it in the presence of the person who is seeking to sell to you, mm -hmm. but when they take you to the land, you just leave. In your own moments, come there. Try and talk to people who are there. The woman who is selling roasting plantain. Yeah. Do you know anything about the land? They will mm -hmm. tell you the history. In fact, it's happened several times. Those people can be your salvation grace. I see. Those people alone, without a lawyer, can yeah. save you. Yeah. They will tell you, hey, this land don't buy it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a conflict land. There are people who have been fighting over it. Yeah. That raises your antenna for you to co conduct more due more diligence sense. to you. Yeah. So there are multiple ways of doing so. What I will advise you against is don't rush in your quest to acquire land. Right. It's Perfect. good to acquire land. Yeah. But take your time. Take your time with it. Take your time yeah. because it is a significant investment of your life yes. that you're making. Mm -hmm. So don't rush into it. Thank you so okay. much for that piece of advice. Mm. Guys, don't rush. Take your time. I mean, land is a hot commodity, but you don't also want to put your money where you're never getting it back. And in the end, it's failure on all ends. So just take your time, do your due diligence, do your searches, and then go ahead and have a smooth and perfect land acquisition uh, process. So thank you so much for speaking to us. Thanks for having me. This has been very, very insightful. I've learned so much. Guys, subscribe, like, share, and stay glued to the channel. We'll be back with more and as usual if you have specific areas that you want us to touch on if you have more questions if there are more inquiries that you want to make just hit us up comment in the comment section call us on all of our channels we will always be readily here to answer all of your questions mm -hmm.